Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go over how to use Laravel Loudware and have dependent drop downs. So, the example I'm going to go with is we've got clients and, and contacts, and the contacts belong to clients, so each client can have its own unique list of contacts. So, what I've got set up is I've got two migrations one for clients, uh, which is just going to have a name, and one for contacts, and that's just going to have a client ID and a name. And within the clients table, I've got three fictional contact, uh, three fictional clients. So we've got three of them there. Uh, so IDs one, two, and three. And I've got a contacts table. And within the contacts table, I've created six contacts and I've rotated the different, which clients they belong to. So the first three records all belong to the first client. Uh, and then these two belong to a second client. And then the last one it belongs to the third client. So that way we've got three different client records and they all have their own unique list of, of contacts. So in order to run this, I'm going to need, I'm going to close this down now. I'm going to need to create um, a live wire component to run for this process. So I'm just going to come out of here and quickly create a new live wire component. Uh, what to call it, uh, contacts. Okay, so that's now been created in HTTP and live wire and uh, contacts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create um, I'm going to create a new file. Or I'm going to create a new root first to go to that file. But you know what? I'll create a root that goes straight to this this um, class that we just created. So if we look into into my web file, uh, so what I'm going to do is create a new uh, get root. Uh, we'll call it contacts. Um, that's going to go to the live wire class that we just created. Uh, called contacts and that's going to root straight to lab wire and that's root straight to the class and I'm just going to import this to make it a little bit cleaner okay so that means that I, now I can go straight to contacts and we should load that root up so if I go to forward slash uh, contacts which is not app it's just contacts so that loads up, obviously it doesn't do anything yet because we've just created an empty root that doesn't actually do anything, uh, but that's fine. Right, so what I'm going to do now is open up the contacts class and then open up the contacts view. So I see the view file doesn't really do anything. Uh, just put some text in so we can see that it is actually loading that page. Go ahead, okay, so far so good. So if we go back to the render, um, one thing we're going to need to do is to load up the, the, the clients and so we could put this in the in the render, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to render. I'm going to load it into a mount instead. Uh, so first, what I want to do is create a public property called uh, clients, and then the second one will be the contacts. And I'm going to do a public property a public method called public function called mount and the mount is just so you can use to load up the data so within this i'm going to say uh, this clients equals i'm going to bring in the client and i'm going to order order by the name and then i'm just going to get all those records okay so that will do for now so then inside of my file here I'm then going to do uh, select and I'll give it the wire model which I really want that to be client ID so really yeah clients is going to be the actual the actual clients themselves just to, to populate it but then for the particular client that we've got selected uh, we're going to call that client ID so we've got something to listen for Uh, so the wire model name would be client ID for the select and inside the select I'm going to say for each client as client and then inside that I'm going to put in the option option value and I'll put in the client and then the ID and then I'll put the client and the name 
and I just need to close the for each loop. Okay, so if I've done that right, we should now see a menu and we've got list of clients. So one thing I should also do is before this list is just do an option, give it a value of nothing and just say select. That way we haven't got one selected by default and we just select the, the, the various clients. So what we want to do is we essentially want another, another drop down for the contacts and depending on which client we select, we want to see a different contact. Uh, just for a little bit of cleanness, let's just do a label and um, we'll say client. And then in this one, I'll give it an ID to so it links the label up with the, the, the label. Let's just give it a little bit, of, makes it a little bit cleaner. Okay. So that if I'm going to duplicate this whole thing, put it down here and this will be the contact. Okay, so we've got contact ID for the contact label. That's going to link through to the ID for like this section. I'm going to link through to a particular contact, which means we also need um, contact ideas should we want to do it? I mean that's kind of bit out of scope of what we're doing and initially we just want the drop downs to change uh, we're just going to show you if we was to go further that you'd, you'd want to have a client ID to use with so I'm going to look for the clients uh, so these also want to be called contact and again these can be just be the ID and name it doesn't need to be any more than that for now so if we go back to our model so what I want to say is if uh, this client ID, if it's not empty, then I want to say uh, this contacts equals, and then I want to I want to list out the contacts. So I want to say contact. Well, again, I want to get it from the model, but now I want to say where the client ID matches uh, this client ID. And then I want to get all records. So what this is going to do, put all the contacts where the client ID matches the current selected client uh, and bring it all out. Okay, so within the, you know, populate the contacts from a selected contact. Otherwise, we're going to use an empty array. So when we come back and we load the page, we've now got contacts and we've got an array that's empty. So now if we select a um, particular client and our contacts is still empty. And the reason for that is because this has been mounted, it's essentially been cached, so this doesn't actually change. So for instance, if I select the client ID and select that to um, the third record and then refresh the page, we've now got the third one because it's, it's kind of cached. And if I change that to the second one, we'll change that so we've got those two. And if I change it to the first one, we should have three within this list. And when I get free within this list, but it doesn't change when we select to a different array, a different client. So if I select to a different client, this doesn't refresh. So the way to do this is we can look at, we essentially want to change this. And because it's mounted, we can't do it here. But what we can do is we can look at an updated in event. So we do a public function and Laravel has an updated uh, function. So when, when something has been updated, any property has been updated, this will run. But then you can also specify it for a particular property. So I want to say when client ID has been updated, and I'll just run this out, just error out so we can see that it actually runs. Okay, so if I refresh the page, select to a different client, and that, that, is, that is running. Okay, so then what I can do is essentially just do the same, same process again. So when this changes, as long as the client isn't empty, then populate the contacts based on the client that's been selected. Okay, so now I've come back and refresh the page again. And so I want to select a client, and that just does the same because we've not told it to kind of unselect itself. But if I go to the first client, we've got three. I go to the second one, and the, there is one. And then go down to the second one, uh, third one here, and then there's two within that. So now we can we can change these based on. Well, when we change the client, these are essentially reloaded. So the last thing we really want to do is saying if you don't select any, then 
then you know that should be updated uh, but you can't do that for the update because it's not actually being updated which I wonder if you can do it this way if there's not you know let's see if it runs that way right, let's just try it so we've got some contacts and we'll say select to remove them and that does indeed remove them so what we're doing this actually runs even when we unselect the, the client uh, and we have the, the default options there I mean, we're essentially duplicating it twice, so it would be nicer if we can call this in a separate way. So let's create a method called get contacts and then put this with it in there because it's the same, it's the exact same code each time. Uh, and that's then in theory, we should then be able to say uh, get contacts uh, to call this out. And then likewise on the initial load, we should be able to do that as well. Uh, so if we come back, refresh the page. So we are getting the data out initially. And if we don't select one, we don't get no contacts. And if we then select a different one, it is indeed updating and re-rendering itself. And then we'll get two out. So this is really good. So if we go back onto the, the front end, we've essentially got two drop downs that from as far as you can see from this side of it not really related to each other but on the class side that they are so if we just clean up it so essentially i mean for this example we don't i wouldn't even need the contact id um so we've got a list of clients we've got a list of contacts and we've got a client id and so we don't really want a default example so if we come back refresh then these are all empty by default until you actually select one and that's when then then populate uh, so this is something I was, I was stuck on recently uh, and then realized the solution wasn't that difficult to solve essentially the solution is is to when the property is updated you can call this updated property name and then do something with that data as it gets updated and in this case because I was doing it on in the mount and then I was doing it again inside the updated. It makes more sense to extract this to its own method, uh, which does that, populates these properties, but then you can call it both times and you're not duplicating your data.